All right, so this is an important paper which is improving few shot classification using a technical thing that we call gradients for task representation. So I'm going to be focusing on this paper in 2022. And these are very important positive samples. Large pre-trained language models like BERT have improved performance in many disparate natural language processing tasks. However, fine-tuning such models requires a large number of training examples for each task. For example, <clears throat> in biomedical text, it's very expensive to create a labeled data or any other domain. In legal domain, in any domain, it's very expensive. So we have to learn from just a few shots, very few examples. That's why we need few shot learning. In this work, we propose a novel conditional neural process-based approach for fuchsia text classification that learns to transfer from other diverse tasks with rich annotation. Our key idea is to represent each task using gradient information from a base model and to train an adaptation network that modulates the text classifier condition on the task representation. While previous task aware fuchsia learners represent tasks by input encoding, our novel task representation is more powerful as the gradient captures input output relationships of a task. So following the terminologies in meta learning, each task is uh, we have support and query as usual. We have text and its discrete value, which corresponds to a class. Because we have many, uh, uh, for example, in NER name entity recognition, we have many different kinds of entities, different classes. This is the model architecture. You need the left one, the base model contains a pre trained language model with bottleneck adapters inserted in each transformer layer and a linear layer stacked on the top. The task embedding network is an RNN-based model that maps gradients from the base model into task representations in a layer-wise fashion, which are used for base model adaptation. And in the right one, you see that the adaptation network contains multi-layer perceptrons that take as input the task representations and intermediate active, activate inside the base model and outputs shifting and scaling parameters that are used to adapt the base model. To handle diverse tasks with different structures, a single model may not be flexible enough. Thus, for every task, we utilize a task embedding network to capture the task nature and adapt a base model conditioned on the current task. So task-specific adaptation is done by generating, shifting, and scaling parameters named adaptation parameters that are applied on the hidden representations inside the base model. So figure one that I showed you, it shows an overview of our model mainly consists of three parts. We have a base model, we have a task embedding network, which is we call it D, and we have adaptation. So we have three models, three parts. And to make prediction or model takes the following steps. Given a support set, it uses the base model to compute gradients with respect to a subset of its parameters to use as input to the task embedding network. The task embedding network maps these gradients to task representations. And then the layer-wise adaptation network take as input the task representation and output adaptation parameters. And finally, the lastly, the, the adaptation parameters are applied to the base model before it predicts and the query set. 
So we have two stages for our training. First, the first stage, the base model, episodically, we train it episodically, just, just like a protonet. Then, then they freeze it, they freeze it, we go to the, we give it, we then freeze the base model and train the task embedding and the adaptation network using the same loss function. So for the classifier, the protonet classifier, given a support set, a core is and a base model, a nearest cluster classifier can be described like this. We call it a nearest cluster classifier. And SC here, as you see, is, is just all that labels have C. And mu uh, sub C is the cluster center. So this is your cluster center. This is your cluster center. And in the embedding space for support example with class C, for all of them are class C. And our task embedding network denoted by D is parameterized just as a recurring neural network. So we use the gradient information defined by the FIM of the base model's parameters, and it's just an expectation of this gradient. And P hat here, as you see, P hat is just empirical distribution defined by the data set. And we only use the diagonal values of F sub theta. We only use those values corresponding to the adapter parameters denoted by G sub L for, because we have different adapter layer, we have two L adapter layers. The RNN-based task embedding network parameterized by phi maps each G sub L into task embedding. So here, H sub L is hidden representation at layer L, and E L is just a task embedding at layer L. So you'll see at different layers, this is a TSNE visualization of the layer and task embedding. So in layer 11, this one, layer 11, refers to the task embedding at the last transformer layer of the BERT base. As you see, each point is an episode or task sampled from a data set. Each color is corresponding to a data set. We have different data sets. So we have different labels for different tasks, task of sentiment classification, task of emotion classification, task of intent detection. So starting from the input layer, the adaptation network produces adaptation parameters for the first adapter layer as follows. Our X is input to the base model and we denote the bottleneck adapter network after modulation as alpha prime. For the subsequent layers, the adaptation network takes as input the combination of task embedding and intermediate activation of the adapted base model and outputs adaptation parameters like this. So finally, the prediction from our mod modulated base model can be written as just a softmax. And you know, this is just the mean of the cluster. So our input is, a, we assume we are given a set of text classification tasks, and the output is just parameters of task embedding model, also parameters of the adaptation network. So we get both phi and psi as output. During this stage, only the parameters of the bottleneck adapters, layer normalization parameters, and the top linear layer are updated while other parameters of the base model are frozen. 
So we learn them. And in the second stage, the task embedding network and the adaptation network are trained episodically to generate good quality task embeddings and adaptation parameters for better performance on the query set of each episode. Specifically, we freeze the encoding network and only train the task embedding network and the adaptation network. In this stage, the frozen base model is used to generate task-specific gradient information and also be adapted to predict the query labels. Same with the first training stage, we also use protonet laws to train DNA, but use the adapted base model. The parameters of the task embedding network phi and the adaptation network psi is learned like this. And this loss is based on the modulated model. And then they compare it uh, with the following approaches. Protonet and the Protonet bird, Protonet BN, mammal. I've explained all of these mammal and protonet, these models in my playlist for future learning. I mean, the, the current playlist. And you have different models, different pre-trained models. We use the results and that's it.